Today I'm going to speak about the eye of the beholder. They say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That beauty is subjective. But surely this applies to everything that we see and that we behold. I recently came across the following story in Bill Darlison's wonderful book, Concentration and Compassion. The story of the dog in the Hall of Mirrors. There once was a dog who wandered into a room filled with mirrors. The dog looked around and seeing what appeared to be lots of other dogs, growled and showed his teeth. When he saw the other dogs do the same, he was frightened and he cowered and bowed down. And when he noticed the other dogs cowering, he once again rose up and growled and started barking. And a similar reaction from the others made him cower and he became very frightened once again. And this continued over and over and over again, rising up and growling and coming, cowering down. The dog soon became exhausted and collapsed dead of emotional and physical exhaustion. Now I wonder what would have happened if the dog had just wagged his tail. It seems that it's not only beauty that is in the eye of the beholder. So much of life is about how we see things and how we look at things. So much of life is about perspective. If only the dog in the story had just wagged his tail instead of snarl, snarling and cowering, he would not have frightened himself to death. Instead, he could have lived a happy and a carefree life. So it's not just about perspective. It's about how we look at things. The eyes reveal so much. So often we get back what we give off in life. I recently att attended a Churches Together talk. And at the talk we were asked which characteristics of Jesus had the greatest impact on us. I said it was his eyes. Or at least the way that he looked at those he came into contact with. They can't say that when he looked at the crowds of people or individuals, no matter who they were, where they'd come from, he looked at them with compassion, with love. How we look at others is so important. We can look on people with compassion or we can give them a hard look. Think about it. When someone gives us a hard look, what do we do? Well, often we turn away in fear or we respond in anger or aggression. What if someone looks at us with compassion? How do we respond to this? Well, usually we look back with compassion. Well, we do unless we have fallen so far into the pit of nihilistic despair that our only response can, to love can be hatred. I'm sure most folk have been there at some point. Sadly, I know I have. How we act towards others really matters. But it's not just about doing what is right. It's also about the spirit in which each task is conducted. We can appear to be encouraging and loving and even doing the right thing. But our eyes will say something else. Think about a smile. We think we smile with our mouths. But do we? No, we smile with our eyes. When I smile, my eyes are almost slant shut. Whatever we do and however we do something, our eyes will reveal the truth of our hearts. And people will instinctively, intuitively pick up on this. They will see it in our eyes. The other week, I was walking down the street and I passed several friends, one after the other, walking on the other side of the road. As they passed, I waved and offered a greeting to them. They responded by waving and saying hello back. I walked away smiling and chuckling to myself. Then a thought came to me. I wish I had a hat. I wish I had a hat so I could tip my hat to them instead of just waving. I could greet them in what seems to me a much more reverential way. By tipping my hat, I should, could show reverence to their sacred uniqueness. In much the same way as a Hindu does when they bow with their hands held together. Wouldn't it be marvellous if we could find ways to revere one another as we passed each other in the street? Then over the last few weeks, I've begun to think about this again. We don't need hats to tip. 
We have our eyes. And our eyes reveal our persona. They truly are the windows to our souls. We can show how we feel about one another and life by simply how we look at the world. We can see the world through hard eyes by giving one another a hard look. Or we can look at the world with love and compassion. When we walk into the hall of mirrors that is life, we can see ourselves reflected back in the eyes of one another and we can either cower down or snarl or we can wag our tails. The choice is ours. Which one do you choose today? How we see the world matters and how we respond perhaps even more so. Life truly is in the eye of the beholder. How we see one another is vital. Try not to look so hard today. And you never know, those eyes looking back at you might just be stretched by a smile. I invite you now to join with me in a few moments of prayer. These words of prayer were adapted by words by Martha Flanagan. So still yourself in this time and space. Quieten your mind. Connect to your body. Your breathing, be still. Loving God, who sees all that is life, help us to see with your eyes. Inspire us to see the new life before us. Give us the open eyes of a child who sees so clearly and touches so deeply. From the core of our being we yearn for new vision, new eyes to see the world, new ears to hear the cries of sorrow and joy. Uplift us to the glories beheld in ourselves and in those around us. And yes, open our hearts to the pain we guard within ourselves and to the pain known by hunger in body and in spirit. In this moment of life, sustain us in the silence of our own thoughts and our own prayers. May peace be with us. Amen. <laughs>